while we're going through all this, walk your minds. If there's anything that you want to think about or contribute on that, I'll just sort of put that out there. Uh, and so rather than take up too much time, uh, I will just go ahead and uh, introduce uh, Dave, who's here from uh, Utah State, uh, who's part of the HydroShare pro program, um, which is a project that's uh, collecting hydrological information uh, across the whole country, I believe. I think we've used some of it even during the, the Harvey situation down here. Uh, he's the principal investigator for HydroShare and uh, leads civil engineering for water uh, up at Utah State University. Uh, and so rather than read all the stuff on the agenda notes, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you to tell us about HydroShare. Okay, great. Thanks. Uh, thanks for the chance to talk. I'm really happy to uh, be sharing this with you. Um, so HydroShare is a web-based system for uh, sharing hydrologic data and models uh, with, uh, with specific functionality aimed at making collaboration easier for hydrologists. It's been developed over the last uh, about six years now in collaboration with Quasi to support um, the initially the data management and publication needs and then uh, growing into uh, model sharing uh, of the hydrologic research community. And we can think of it as the hydrology community's sort of contribution to the transparency and research reproducibility um, uh, movement. Uh, it's funded by the National Science Foundation, uh, uh, the SS or SI2 program, Software Integration for Sustained Innovation, and uh, that program's changed names now, but um, it was funded under the, under the old name. It's really operated by the Consortium of Universities for Advancement of Hydrologic Science Incorporated, which is uh, what QASI stands for, with the project that I'm uh, leading, effectively developing it. And uh, other co-PIs on the development of it are, are Ray Itasak, and then for the second round of funding, Xiaowen Wang at uh, the CyberGS Center at the University of Illinois. So the Renzi crew knows this quite well. Um, I wanted to, just in the next slide, uh, talk a bit about what uh, Quasi is, uh, it's a nonprofit consortium of about 130 US universities whose mission is to shape the future of water science by strengthening interdisciplinary collaboration. And uh, this data sharing uh, activity of HydroShare is, uh, is part of that uh, sort of broader uh, community effort. So that's the, effectively the audience that uh, this uh, cyber infrastructure is, uh, is targeting. Uh, our motivation, um, is uh, really collaboration. So this slide is intended to uh, emphasize the collaborative nature of hydrologic research, the need to uh, combine information from multiple sources uh, to do analyses that may be data and computationally intensive, but, all. but you still need collaboration even if they're not. Um, and uh, address, address the grand challenges, avoiding flooding, uh, avoiding water shortages, um, and uh, things like that. On the right, you see um, just a screenshot of uh, the HydroShare website, uh, which I'll be talking, uh, talking through a little bit. And uh, it's a sort of open access. Anybody can uh, post uh, data in it and use it for, for collaboration. So it's really a user contributed, almost bottom up, bottom up type system, similar to uh, perhaps the way uh, people would share videos on on YouTube and pictures on uh, Snapchat or one of uh, one of the other social media sites. Um, when you think of the data and models used by hydrologists, it's, they are quite diverse. Uh, you have time series data, a lot of geographic information that may be gridded in the form of rasters or uh, in uh, vector or linear format uh, in the, what we refer to as geographic features. You may have multi-dimensional space-time data. And then you may have that aggregated together into uh, model uh, programs and uh, model instances. And we distinguish between um, the programs, which is the, the code that actually uh, implements the, the computations, and then the, the model instance, which would be that program plus the data for application of it at a uh, specific watershed, for example. Um, so we've uh, designed HydroShare to hold uh, a sort of wide variety of the data of interest and in the formats that uh, hydrologists like to use. Um, so first, let me, this slide just sort of steps through what HydroShare is. First, it's a platform for sharing uh, 
and collaborating, really exchanging information in the terms of computer files. So file storage with Dropbox-ish type of functionality, um, hopefully as, as easy to uh, share information as Dropbox. But then we want to add uh, information, metadata descriptions, uh, provide access uh, to that metadata through API, add the capability for web apps, add social functions, uh, enable formal publication of the data to get digital object identifiers so that uh, it can be identified in, uh, in citations uh, and uh, enhance trust um, in the findings. So that's all the, some of the value added functionality that we're building on with the goal really to advance uh, the science by enabling the community to uh, easily and freely share the products resulting from, from the research not just the scientific publication, but also the data and the models used to create them. So uh, it's based on um, a fairly carefully designed uh, resource data model that uh, uses open archives initiative object reuse and exchange standards. Uh, so uh, the pattern with that is that there's a, every, everything is referred to as a, a resource and we use the word resource because um, that can describe quite generally uh, an, an object that one might be sharing comprised of computer files, it may be data, it may be a model, it may be a combination of, uh, a combination of both, that can get uh, grouped into aggregation. So there's an aggregation that says certain objects are collected together. And at the bottom here, we've got some of our, our schema, the sort of core part of the schema for uh, the Dublin core elements in our uh, in the in the metadata, and if you want to know more about that, there's a, a paper at that link. And I should also point out that uh, the slides are actually available in HydroShare itself. Uh, I should have pointed that out on the slide at the beginning. You can search for the keyword BD Hub WG 2018, or uh, type in the long unique identifier that would be a bit of a challenge to type in. Um, so uh, this is the, I've just got a couple of screenshots uh, of uh, some of the interface with, with HydroShare. I don't want to, I recognize it's a lightning talk, so I can't uh, do too much of it. But uh, there's the uh, individual user after they've logged in uh, can go to their My Resources page and create new resources. That, that's where they uh, get to um, basically post information into the system. Uh, there's uh, IROD is used as the underlying uh, storage layer. So if you've got data in IROD, you can actually uh, create a resource directly from IROD's data, or you can upload it. Uh, and what we're working on uh, for the currently funded project is the ability to pull in data from uh, other third-party storage systems, uh, perhaps uh, Google Drive or, uh, or Dropbox or systems like that. Um, so uh, then when you actually get on, after you've created a resource, it's got uh, a number of features. Uh, the, the landing page for the resource shows the authors, the owner, uh, the type of it, uh, when it was created, uh, citation information. Uh, for example, if it's been published with a DOI, it'll, that'll, be, uh, that'll be given there, the abstract that the user who created the resource wrote. And then for each resource, you can manage the access. So uh, information can be private or, uh, or public. You can uh, give people permission to just view or edit. There's commenting and rating uh, that's been somewhat underused, but we built that in uh, with the idea of trying to promote uh, social value uh, onto four resources. Um, and then you can do things like organize resources into collections uh, um, and uh, Pro, and you can also create different versions, but one of the interesting things is you can open it, them with compatible web apps. Um, so the concept here is that uh, apps can, or effectively any uh, web-based system that can, can act on resources through the applications program interface to uh, perhaps support visualization, support uh, analysis, and uh, Anybody can establish an app and then register it in HydroShare. If it gets approved by Kohazi, it'll appear on the app's landing page. 
But even if it doesn't get approved by Quasi or it's still in the process of being evaluated, um, it's still available for uh, people to, to use. One of the, the apps that we're putting quite a lot of uh, energy into is uh, really a deployment of, uh, of Jupyter Hub with a Jupyter Python notebook app because that uh, gives uh, fairly general capability to uh, have, uh, let's say, um, sort of entry level uh, programmers uh, write and execute code in the system where there's uh, all of the libraries and dependencies effectively uh, resolved for them extract data from HydraShare to do their work and then save it back into HydraShare, including the notebook itself, and then let other people uh, perhaps pick up on uh, working on the notebook more in a, in a collaboration. Um, so I know this is a fairly uh, technical crowd, so I wanted to go a bit into um, how the system works. Um, at a sort of high level, there's really three uh, parts to it. The, Main entry point is a, is a Django website. So the technology that we've used is a software stack uh, built on, on Django. And uh, that's used uh, effectively to support the loading of information, support the editing of metadata, support the discovery of resources, and uh, to organize and annotate your content to, to manage access. So if you want to think of this as parallel to perhaps the way a a PC works, you'd think of this as the as a file explorer. Um, then we've got iRods as the uh, effectively uh, interface to the storage layer, and that's to allow uh, data to be uh, held in, in federated data stores. So while HydraShare provides some capacity, there's also um, capacity for other um, perhaps heavy uh, heavy or big big data um, users to establish their own uh, federated uh, IROD server that would then uh, appear in a, in a seamless way to the, to the website, so distributed file storage. Uh, that's analogous to the sort of different hard drives on a, on a computer. Um, then there's the, the web apps that provide actions on resources, uh, and that's where the real power and extensibility comes from, because anybody can uh, set up a server to operate on resources uh, through um, that, that are held in IRODs through the through the through the APIs. So there's a number of examples of those already. There's uh, Swatch here, which is actually at Purdue running with Hub Zero. Uh, there's uh, apps that are, are at CyberGIS at University of Illinois. Now those happen to be uh, offline right now because they were on the Roger system that's going through a, a rebuild. Um, you can have apps that take advantage of standard uh, systems that come out of, say, Unidata in the atmospheric sciences uh, for uh, accessing uh, multidimensional data. So we, we decided that the multidimensional data format in HydraShare was to be, um, was, we were going to just use NetCDF files because that's widely uh, used for that. Um, so um, got a couple of slides to, um, to end here, this is, this is just a bit about our statistics. So we keep track of uh, the the users that we uh, we have sign up, and we keep also keep track of uh, how frequently they uh, they log in and whether they've been active or not. The primary audience being um, the U.S. hydrologic research community, but it's open to international use. And we're also trying to keep track of uh, who the people are in terms of uh, being able to report to. Um, to National Science Foundation and other organizations. And then we're also looking at uh, the number of resources uh, that uh, have been added to the system and their, and their types to sort of understand how people are uh, looking at things. Um, this is just a fairly small snapshot uh, from the, um, the metric tracking system that we uh, have to be able to understand uh, what's going on. So this just summarizes some of the points that I've made. It's a web-based system for data and model sharing. You can access multiple types of hydrologic data using uh, standards compliant formats. Uh, there's a discovery mechanism, which I didn't uh, show, but one of the pages there was discover. And if you go to that, uh, you enter keywords and it uses a solar-based uh, discovery. Um, you can uh, share models and uh, to the degree that the models can be executed by apps, you can execute them. 
facilitate ease of access to high performance computing. Um, and that really comes from the, the data being configured to go into a system. And we're actually going to be, uh, I'm traveling to EGU in uh, Vienna next week. And there's uh, a group of the HydroShare team are, are going to be connecting HydroShare to um, the Cheyenne supercomputer um, that's part of NCAR to try and uh, to, to, to sort of show the, show the collaboration around, around the model that's running there. Um, so we're, we're really thinking of uh, or effectively framing the data as social objects that people could use for collaboration, um, trying to be interoperable to other data and modeling systems with ultimately the goal being to advance hydrologic understanding uh, more rapidly. And that's the uh, picture of uh, some of the team uh, outside of outside of Renzi. And a lot of credit goes to all the people who've done all the work. Very nice. Very Thank nice. you so much. So uh, I'll just open things up to questions from uh, the audience. Great. This is Florence. This is great. Um, I just actually looked to see if I could take a peek at it online and I can. Can you tell us, I think it said there were like 9% of the users are professionals. Can you let us know like what types of companies they work for? They work for engineering firms or construction firms. Could, do you know? Um, well, I don't know offhand. Um, we would have to uh, go and uh, yeah, I mean, we'd have to look at the list and try and uh, categorize it. Um, so uh, I think that uh, it's um, probably uh, people who are involved with, uh, say, for example, American Water Resources Association, uh, where we've uh, had presentations uh, quite a bit. Uh, people who are perhaps involved with uh, ESRI and GIS, uh, software um, and uh, the, the some of the uh, yeah the, the the consultants involved in the, in the business of solving water problems and uh, and water forecasting it's easy if there was like if I'm speaking to construction firms interested in water management is it e easy for them to sign up uh, yes. Um, right now, there's uh, no limitations. Anybody can uh, anybody can sign up and get an account uh, in a matter of a few minutes. Um, so uh, we did. Uh, I mean, there's always uh, a danger when you sort of make a system free and easy about uh, whether it's going to get overwhelmed by um, by uh, a use that wasn't necessarily the primary one that you, you funded for. But we've got a strategy where we uh, basically give each user a, uh, a free quota of uh, 20 gigabytes. And then uh, if somebody needs, uh, needs more than that, basically they just need to talk to Quasi about it. And if they're a sort of NSF person uh, funded from the Hydrologic Sciences Program, then uh, Quasi would bend over backwards to try and accommodate. If they're uh, from, uh, a, a company that's really got a lot of money, then we'd uh, try and figure out a way to uh, get into the negotiation where there can be some sort of funding for the cost of supporting whatever they want to do. Excellent. That makes a lot of sense. Thank you. All right. So we have a, a question chat here. I'll go ahead and read, uh, yeah. which is, uh, are you using any ontologies or otherwise preparing for utilization of uh, AI, ML uh, on these vast data resources? Um, so uh, we have, uh, we're, we're not using any, uh, any formal ontologies. Um, well, to, um, at, a, at a rudimentary level. So uh, our resource data model uh, describes each metadata element um, uh, from, formally from a namespace where we uh, where we've got uh, terms that uh, we can pull from Dublin core or, or things like that uh, we are using them we found that uh, for quite a lot of concepts we've uh, defined our own terms um, so that uh, 
that, that may not be necessarily all that helpful uh, for uh, if everybody effectively defines all the words that they're going to be using themselves. Um, but that's definitely a, an issue that we're trying to sort of be sensitive to. We, we would like it all to be uh, effectively machine readable. But if you've got any ideas or uh, suggestions to help us with that, that would be a good thing to perhaps follow up on. All right, I haven't seen anything else pop up in the chat window on that, but oh. go ahead, Christine. Oh, yeah, actually my question was for you, Niall. Um, I really enjoyed the presentation, by the way, and, um, and I have a couple follow-up things that I'll, I'll be emailing David about. But Niall, I was wondering if you have any thoughts on how um, HydroShare and Holtail, maybe even our workbench, um, where there's <laughs> commonality and maybe a place to converge. I think that would be interesting, the ability to, to, to migrate. I mean, you know, we're, so Holtail uh, is, uh, I think many people here know about it, but it's essentially the, we're, we're using containers as a way to have reproducible computation and publishable both data results and the computations. So, um, and, and so I think with this, um, I mean, we have the ability to subscribe to IROD's data. It would be sort of, again, data discovery and, and bringing those things in, but it, it, it would be an interesting uh, thing to do as well as perhaps even uh, if possible getting some of those apps into containers so that we can uh, run with those in, in an environment that will capture that. Um, so I, I do think there's, there's a lot of parallels that we can, we can work on here. Um, right, I would, I would like to learn, learn a lot about that. I haven't heard about Holtail before, but um, there is, uh, the, we're using uh, Docker containers uh, quite widely in the, in the system itself has, is uh, split up um, amongst a bunch of Docker containers, but also in our uh, Jupyter Hub environment, some of the models are being uh, put in Docker. So that's the one uh, level of okay. containers using. The other one is, um, Tanu Malik uh, at uh, DePaul University in Chicago has a EarthCube project that's uh, developing what she calls a SI unit, which is a sort of containerization procedure that can, uh, you can go through a sequence of, uh, um, of steps executing programs. It will record all of those as well as record all of the dependencies, uh, allow you to put all of those in a container that she calls a SI unit you can actually then uh, push that container into HydroShare. Somebody else could download it to a different uh, platform and re-execute and uh, reproduce the results. So That's, um, that, I think there's a lot of similar resources like that lying around in HydroShare. Yeah, uh, no, it, it sounds like it's right for the picking on that because all of those things I think are possible and it'd just be interesting to see how we could federate across things like this. Um, I, I had an additional question. We probably ought to run on real quick uh, rather than going on. But the one that I had was, this is uh, mostly users bringing in data. Uh, do you also support sort of data streaming coming in from sensors and other sources that are then uh, leveraged by both the modeling and data integration portions? Um, we do uh, to a limited extent. Um, the We've got a couple of what we refer to as um, community high value data sets, such as outputs from the national water model mm -hmm. uh, that we are actually uh, supporting on uh, separate IROD servers at Renzi. And uh, though we provide access to that uh, through apps that can get uh, launched from HydroShare. Um, so uh, that's, that's the sort of one um, sort of connection to uh, uh, sort of high value data. The other is, uh, while HydroShare was developed with uh, sort of user contributions in mind, because the Quasi prior to the start of HydroShare had developed uh, the Quasi Hydrologic Information System, which is uh, really designed for streaming data coming in from experimental watersheds stored in a, a Hydro server, which is a system that uh, has a relational database to, to hold this data and publish it using uh, a 
standard, uh, now an OGC standard called WaterML. So um, we have the ability to reference uh, data that's streamed uh, into the quasi HIS. But a lot of that functionality is, is to support the um, hydrology communities uh, from that, that other set of functionality that quasi supports. All right. Well, thank you very much for uh, a good talk and lots of information. And we probably ought to, uh, I should get in touch with you a little bit about Christine's suggestion as well as the, uh, I don't know if you know about the data, national data service stuff that uh, we have in the workbench there, which might also be an interesting area to look into. I know some of it, but I could certainly sure. probably learn more. Certainly. <laughs> so, um, all right. So let's move on to the second lightning talk.